Praise God. Well, we will hopefully have Kevin back soon. And I'll just tell you, the harder you pray, the less you'll have to deal with me and the more you'll have him back. So you should pray really hard. He's doing well. Um, I know I, I cannot tell you how grateful we have been for um, just the love of the body. Uh, we are well taken care of by our family. We have not been alone, but I cannot tell you the messages, the cards, the prayers, the love, and um, it just feels great. And I hope that um, there's a day we can repay everyone for that and let you know how much we appreciate that. But it has encouraged Kevin. I've sat with him as he's cried through messages and he's doing good. Um, I know that COVID is done. Praise God. He did have it. That is long gone. Um, but we need to pray for his lungs. A lot of people don't understand what's going on, but if you've had it, some people recover very easily. Others, there is a, a trail of damage left behind. But how many believe that is just like the enemy? And that's probably the stupidest thing he could have ever done is try to touch Kevin's lungs. And we are just believing for rapid healing. So his life is not in danger and he is good in his mind. His his lungs are bothering him. And so preaching as he would, would be a little difficult. Um, but I'm just going to agree with Richie. Um, I remember when Robbie Dawkins came here to speak a couple years ago, he said, anytime the enemy attacks my family, I make him pay a toll. Does anybody remember that? So we're going to make the devil pay a toll for this, for Kevin, for all of you who have been affected. And we're just going to believe for healing. So he is watching. And Kevin, we love you and we miss you. Um, I just want to talk today. You're going to get probably the leftovers of what I didn't get to say at Women of Fire. I'm just going to tell you right now, bringing us all up to speed. Uh, because when I preach, I, I tend to give a prophetic word and direction for where the church is. Um, and I feel the need to do that today. Uh, we are victorious today. And I want to talk a little bit about what I believe is happening in the church right now, um, again, and where we are as a church, what God is doing. Um, the women's conference was super, super strategic this weekend. And there were some brave men who came also because we're figuring out it's not really just for women. But a lot of people wonder why is there such focus on women right now? I don't know if you notice in the secular world, there's a lot of focus on women right now. And in the church world, there's a lot of focus on women right now. And if you aren't listening by the spirit, you might miss why. And that's not to leave the, the men out. Actually, it's because we as women are a living object lesson of what we all are as the bride of Christ. And as the return of Christ quickly approaches, the focus is on the bride. It's on the church, the body of Christ, male and female. And so right now we're seeing a real assignment to distort the identity and position and authority and, and role of woman. And it's because there's a real assignment of the enemy to confuse, distort, and devalue the value of the church and the bride in the earth. Do you see that happening? And so the women's conference was really important because it was actually a prophetic message to the church. And I just want to continue on something that I didn't get to teach on this weekend that's for the church and then uh, we'll be done. And I'm going to read two passages of scripture uh, that you might not think go together, but they will. Ephesians chapter 5. I'm going to read verse 25 and 26, and you can hold that, and I'll be moving over to the Song of Solomon, chapter 8, and I'm going to read verse 6. So if you'll stand with me very briefly for the reading of the word, and then I'll let you be seated, and from that point, you can just stand up if you want to. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 and 26, husbands. Love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. Super important. Gave himself for her. Who is the her? The church. You didn't believe me, but women are the living object lesson of the church. As Christ loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present 
her to himself as a glorious bride, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she would be holy and without blemish. Look at your neighbor and say, you are the bride. Song of Solomon chapter eight, verse six. Set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm, For love is as strong as death, jealousy as cruel as the grave. Its flames are flames of fire, a most vehement flame. Will you just pray for me and really pray for me and I'll pray for you that the Lord's word would go forth today. Father, we just come together as your body. We just wanna hear from you today. In fact, Father, we're desperate to hear from you today. Your word is life. Your word is strength. At your word, heaven and earth move. At your word, we are set free. And Lord, we don't need enticing words of man's wisdom today. We need the power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit that follows the unction of your word being declared. And today, Father, I pray you would take me beyond me and you would just use my voice as a mouthpiece for what you would say to the bride today. And Father, I pray for every person sitting in this room today that their ears would be open to hear not just their natural ears, but their spiritual ears. Let revelation fall upon their heart. Even revelation, I don't say. Holy Spirit, you take the word and even take it deeper through every person listening right now. Let it get all the way down to our heart. Let it be planted in good soil and let it begin to bear fruit. Father, your bride has to bear fruit. We don't wanna be a fruitless tree. We don't want to be the fig tree that cannot produce when you need us to. Father, let this word begin to bear fruit in our lives. And Father, we just come into agreement that it is our desire to be washed by your word and be the bride without spot and without blemish in this place today. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. We're in a unique season in the kingdom, and as we had this conference this weekend, it was the Roaring Twenties, and that was our theme we ran with, but an underlying theme that I had planned to teach on, and then our first speaker came and just taught everything I had, was about the bride. And Damon said it on Thursday night, and I almost fell in my, out of my seat, which I don't know why we do that. The, the word of the Lord is not exclusive to any person. And if you think God only speaks to preachers, you're missing some really good revelation time in your quiet time. God will speak to you. And it is my desire that this body gets so in love with communion with the Lord and so in love with the word that when Kevin and I get up to preach, you're sitting there going, God already said that to me this week. And that the word going forth is a confirmation of what you're already hearing. That's really how it should be. And it was as if Damon had read my sermon notes about the bride. Because we are moving into a season of what he called restored bridal identification. The church has gone through many phases, many transitions. We're still walking toward perfect identity. We're still learning what it means to be the church. We have come out of phases of religion. We have come out of phases of exclusivity we should have never walked in. We've come out of phases of, of being absent of signs, wonders, and miracles. We've, we've been growing in our identity, and the more we discover who we are, the more the fullness of the word can be manifested in his body. And it's been amazing to be on that journey. But I'm here to tell you, the love of God has many facets. He is love. God is love. And I don't have time to talk about the multiple revelations, the unfolding, manifold, many-folded wisdom of God. But he's like that garment or that towel you have at home that every time you unfold it, you realize it's bigger. It's bigger. You you can fold something up and it will look small, but every time you unfold it, it's bigger and that's God. He has many folds and every time you dive into the word or you dive into prayer, he'll just unfold another layer and you'll realize, wow, you were bigger. 
You were bigger than I thought. He is ever unfolding, and it's why heaven is never a boring place. It's why worship never ceases in heaven. They don't get bored like we do with the same song over and over and over because every time they circle him and every time they see him, there's just another fold. And for those of you who are like my children, we love to do this. We love to give ourselves brain freeze, brain headache when we think of eternity, right? When you try to think of living forever, 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 your, your carnal mind can't wrap around it. And you might think of it according to time on earth and, and you might actually think, could heaven get boring? Like, what are we gonna do forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever? But God is so amazing, like Kevin would say, not only is he the God who was and the God who we're currently seeing, but do you realize for all of eternity, you will still discover God? So don't think, sitting in your seat today, you have arrived at a place where you know him and you know all about him and that your life is meant to be just a replay button of the history of who God has been to you and that there's not still miles ahead of you on a journey called relationship that you have to walk. I don't care if you're 90 sitting in this place today. Until you draw your last breath, there is new revelation for you to gain of Yahweh and when you meet him in eternity, you will still say, I didn't know you were that big. That's God. And the church is growing and we are also unfolding. And the love of God unfolds. He is love. And so if you think of love, he is an expression of every form. We, we don't understand this because in our lives, we have love compartmentalized into specific relationships that the Lord gives us and he gives us those relationships so we can understand that particular facet of who he is. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's why you have a mama and he says, just like a mother who's nursing her child, I'll not forget you. He wants you to know his love is like a mother's love. It's greater. It's why you have a father and it's why Jesus said our father, Abba, he called him Abba. It was a statement of affection. If you go to Israel today, it was the coolest thing. My favorite part of every trip of, to Israel I ever took, are you ready? It was walking through the streets and watching little Jewish families out to eat or at the grocery store and hearing the five, six, and seven-year-old child going, Abba, Abba, when they would get lost or they would want something because it's a statement of, an, of affection. It's like saying, Papa, and Jesus called him Abba. Abba. And he said, we can call him Abba. And so when you think of a father's love, that's just another aspect of God. And then you think of brotherly, sisterly love. How many grew up in a church where everybody was brother and sister? Don't you kind of miss that? <laughs> I just thought that was like part of their name, sister so-and-so, brother so-and-so. Every once in a while, I'll get called Sister Wallace and it makes me feel so old. But brotherly, sisterly love, right? We're supposed to join hands. You're my brother. You're my sister. We're both adopted into the family. And, and those of you that beat up your brother and sister, maybe you didn't get a good aspect of who God was, but that brotherly, sisterly love, it's very powerful. It's very powerful. But what I want to talk about is a different kind of love. And it's the love that you get to express in marriage. It's a covenant love, and it's a bridegroom love. It's the love that is shown, the facet of it is shown in the Song of Solomon, and some of us still can't read it, right? We don't like that. We're like, what is this in the Bible for? It's a love affair. What is this? But it is another aspect of God that many of us are comfortable with Abba, we're comfortable with mama, we're comfortable with brother, sister, we're comfortable with the friend, right? The friend that loves at all times and no greater love has this, a friend than he lay down his life. We're comfortable with friend. But when I read Ephesians, like I read to you, Jesus isn't coming back for his mama. Jesus isn't coming back for his father. Jesus isn't coming back looking for another brother or sister. And the word doesn't even say he's returning for a friend. It says he's coming back for a bride. He's coming back for the one. 
his affection is set on. He's coming back to take his bride for an eternal wedding in heaven. Because there is something about the bride, the church, that is supposed to be madly and passionately in love with their maker. And what is happening in the church in this hour is he is re-identifying us as bride and he's awakening that bridal identity. You can see it in worship. If you read worship songs that were written 150 years ago and worship songs that were written 75 years ago, they're all good. They're all declaring the word. They're declaring the blood. They're declaring victory. And then you look about 20 years ago, actually go a little further back in Amy Grant days. Anybody remember Amy Grant? (laughs) That was like amazing. It was the first time we ever had music like that. And then you look now at what this generation is singing. Sometimes you can't tell the difference between a song to Jesus or a love song to their boyfriend or girlfriend. And and that bothers some of us. I recognize not all the music these days is very packed with scripture or theologically sound, but it's a cry that's coming forth in worship that God is actually pulling out of our sons and daughters. It's a cry of a bride. It's a love song of passion and fervor. And as we had women of fire this weekend and we talk about the fire of the Holy Ghost, there's a fire that comes with the Holy Ghost. And it's not just a fire to evangelize. And it's not just a fire to overcome sin and a fire to get in your word. When you get filled with the Holy Ghost, a bridal fire is lit within your spirit. It's why when the bride of Christ was birthed in the book of Acts, they were birthed in an upper room. Jesus said, just wait for it. Just wait for the fire. Don't go anywhere. Don't preach anything. Don't do anything until you are endued with power from on high and you'll know when it happens. Notice he didn't give him any details. He just let them know, you'll know. Just wait. And when you look at the book of Acts church, and I'm not gonna tear it apart today, but I challenge you, if you're looking for what to study right now and what to read, I have de- I've dove into the book of Acts. Because I'm of the opinion, whatever it took to birth the church, it's gonna take the same thing for us to finish this thing. And if you think the book of Acts church is going to be more powerful and more glorious than the bride Jesus is returning for, you've missed it. We're not supposed to decrease from generation to degeneration and diminish from generation to generation. We were supposed to start a journey that takes us from glory to glory to glory to glory. And he will not return for a bride that is any less fervent, any less glorious, any less powerful than what you you see in the book of Acts. But there's almost like a grief in the church. We read the book of Acts and say, wonder what that was like. And I'm here to tell you the Lord is not limiting our capacity to walk in the same fire and passion and mentality. But it's going to take some change and some washing of the word to make us a bride without spot or blemish. So I've been diving into the book of Acts and when you read the book of Acts, there's just some key markers of the book of Acts that I feel are relevant to the church of 2020. Number one, they started with the fire. In fact, and I might make some people upset with me, if you notice in the book of Acts, Jesus did not make the fire optional. He did not make the Holy Spirit optional. And I'm not here to teach a theology that you have to be filled with the Holy Ghost to go to heaven. It's the cross. It's the blood of Jesus alone. And if you died today, saved yet not filled with the Holy Ghost, you would stand before the Lord redeemed. But that is not an excuse for those of you who aren't going to die today to stop pursuing the fullness of what he did for you on the cross. And we as a church have made the Holy Spirit like the mashed potatoes on the side of a plate 
that if you don't feel like eating it, just leave it. It's not a big deal. But if you're really hungry, dive in. And that is not how Jesus presented the fire. He said, you go to that room and you don't do another thing until you've been endued with power from on high. If we're gonna do this right, you're gonna have to do it with the Holy Ghost. Why don't you just wait there? And as a church, we have lost the ability to wait on the Holy Ghost. We have lost him as our focus and our center point. Jesus is not here. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he said, it's expedient that I go. I've got to leave you because I am sending another. And Jesus didn't play tag team with the Holy Ghost so that you could put him in a corner and pull him out when you're in trouble. That was not the great exchange of the Trinity. And so I'm going to submit something really strong to you. And this is not the Bible. This is Devin Wallace's opinion of reading the Bible. If it took fire to keep the church in Acts, if I were you, I wouldn't try to survive the rest of 2020 without the Holy Ghost. I wouldn't try to survive the next decade without the Holy Ghost. If you haven't seen that hell isn't playing right now and that there's not a war for souls going on over your head, if you haven't seen that darkness is trying to invade this earth, don't you lay your head down at night and think, well, maybe I'll try the Holy Ghost next year. I'm telling you, the church needs the fire if we are going to be the bride in this hour. We need the Holy Ghost. And so today, you don't have to wait another day. The only people who were ever commanded to tarry were the original, well, there might have been 500 of them there, 120 about stayed. Those original. And if you look at what happened subsequent of that initial outpouring, people were getting the Holy Ghost when the preachers were preaching. Nobody ever went back to a room and tarried. Never, never, never. They laid hands and the Holy Ghost fell. They declared the word and the Holy Ghost fell. And I long, I'm just gonna prophesy it now. I'm gonna make the devil pay a toll. I've had a week and a half. I'm gonna tell you, I'm praying over this atmosphere of the church. It is such a fire furnace. It is such a fireball that every Sunday we come together while Kevin is preaching that people in their seat who don't even know the Holy Ghost will open their mouth and start speaking in tongues. I pray people walk in the parking lot speaking in tongues. I pray they go to their car speaking in tongues. Holy Ghost, set this atmosphere on fire with cloven tongues of fire and fill your bride in this house. And I didn't even intend to teach on it, but I got filled with the Holy Ghost when I was eight. I'll never forget it. And I remember two church mamas who I love dearly praying with me. They prayed, prayed, prayed with me in my ear. Prayed, prayed, prayed. And I thank God for women who tarried with me. But you don't even have to have anybody lay hands on you to receive the Holy Spirit. And when you are filled, I don't know who in here is not filled. This is not in my notes. When you are filled with the Holy Ghost, you'll wonder how you ever survived without him. He's the sweetest, greatest, most incredible friend you'll ever have. He's with you. He's in you. You can be in Walmart and darkness will try to creep on you. And a lion will just roar up inside of your belly. The Holy Ghost will just tell the devil, back up. You'll be watching something and temptation will fall on you. And something will rise up in your belly. And the the Holy Ghost will just tell temptation, back up. You'll be trying to make a decision in the middle of the night and not know what to do and the Holy Spirit will just whisper divine instruction to you when you're crying and no person can comfort you. He'll just come on you like a blanket. He'll start praying through you when your words aren't enough. He's the most wonderful gift Jesus ever gave us. And you need that fire. But I'll tell you this, the Holy Spirit testifies of him. He's a fire. What the Song of Solomon said in chapter 8, I totally lost my place. It's a fire of passion. It's a burning fire, a fervent fire that won't go out. 
going to wait on me while I read it. Set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm, for love is as strong as death, jealousy as cruel as the grave. Its flames are flames of fire, a most vehement flame. And I believe when cloven tongues of fire set on each one of them in the upper room, it was a flame of love. How do you know that, Pastor Devin? Because another earmarker of the church of Acts was that they didn't move till they were filled. And when they were filled, they, they couldn't ever be silent again. It was amazing. It was amazing and scary. And I'm going to say some things that some of you may not like, but it's the word. Do you recognize that those who came out of that upper room and then those who were subsequently filled, they never forsook the preaching of the gospel? Even in prison? When you look at the church of Acts, trouble followed them. And I never remember any of them ever writing anything in the book of Acts about what they did to avoid trouble. They didn't look for it, but they certainly didn't run from it. They were so set on fire, their focus was so fierce that you could beat them and they would still leave the room and preach the gospel. You'll literally read where they beat Paul and tell him stop preaching and the next chapter he's right back out in the street preaching because no trouble in the flesh could ever extinguish the flame of love that was burning in him and you could beat him but you couldn't beat it out of him you could lock him in jail but you couldn't contain it he said give me a pen give me a piece of paper I will write of the love of Jesus and we in 2020 are a church that we really try to avoid trouble, don't we? Hmm. Hmm. We don't want trouble. We don't want to lose our nonprofit status. We don't want to get a fine, and we certainly don't want to go to jail. We just want to live our normal life and show up at church on Sunday and hear a good word and wait till Jesus comes. There's not a fire burning in us that wakes us up at night and goes to sleep in the morning and goes to sleep with us at night. Like Jeremiah said, it was a fire in his bones that even when the king threatened him and the people hated him, he said, I quit. I'm done prophesying, but it's like a fire. Your word, O oh Lord, is like a fire. Shut up in my bones, and I cannot keep silent. What's wrong with the church in 2020? We're living in an identity and a title absent of the fire. Because if you had a fire, it couldn't take an army to keep you down. Stephen... They were stoning him and his eyes weren't even on them. We've got our eyes on our trouble and we've taken them off the one that our hearts should burn for. Stephen was being stoned and they said his face looked like an angel as he looked to heaven. Church, when they start throwing stones at you, you ought not look at your accusers. You ought not look at the stones. You ought to look at the one that there's a fire in his eyes for you. When you lock eyes with him, you recognize just as you are the bride, he is the groom, and your love can never outdo his. So I just submit to you, I believe the Lord wants to relight a fire in the church. I'm never going to get through all this. I'm going to just skip to what he spoke to me. It's a Peter versus John moment. This is going to hurt. It's going to sting just a little, but it's going to help us. Both followed Jesus. Both sat at his feet. But both had a very different identity 
of who they were with Jesus. Both had a different philosophy of how they would see the kingdom come. How do I know that? Because they behave differently. John, you never really hear he said much, but he's always listening. And you'll never really find a time where Jesus is without John. Even when the 12 was broken down to the three, John was there. Even at the Last Supper, I think I've taught this before, that John sat next to Jesus and when the disciples wanted to know a secret, they didn't ask Jesus, they asked John because they knew he would know. His solution for the kingdom was proximity to Jesus. Peter was the fighter. He was always looking for a fight. He wanted to see the kingdom of God come in a battle by force. He was always ready to fight, declare. He even tried to cut somebody's head off. And Jesus rebuked him. He said, Peter, if you're gonna live by the sword, you're gonna die by the sword. And I'm here to tell you that the church has kind of gotten obsessed with authority and warfare and how we can force our nation into serving God and how we can take our authority and name and claim and usurp our rights. But those same individuals that are screaming those things aren't really in their prayer closet of relationship. Are you hearing me? And we think in this last day, God's gonna come back for a warrior, but he's actually gonna come back for a bride. Because Peter was a lot of talk and a lot of action, but there wasn't depth to his relationship. How do I know that? Because when the rubber met the road, Peter denied him. Peter ran. Peter hid. I'm afraid the church is infected with the mentality of Peter. We're all about making our declarations and worshiping boldly in these altars as long as there's no trouble. But as soon as trouble shows up at the door, you can't find Peter. I told you it's going to sting. As soon as opposition shows up, where is Peter? But I'm going to tell you this. At the cross, you find mom and you find John. Because John may not have been the most effective warrior, but he was a lover. John loved Jesus. He loved him so much that even when everyone else was gone, he remained. He was there. He was there till Jesus drew his last breath. And it was John who received the revelation in the book of Revelation of the glorified Jesus. Because a Peter church will run when there's trouble, but a John church will remain at the foot of the cross no matter what costs. Why? Because love is stronger than death. I just read it to you from the Song of Solomon. Why is the church so afraid? Because the church is not yet enough in love with Jesus. Because if you get infected with the fire of love, it is so much stronger than the fear of death. This may not be hitting your heart, but I'm preaching to Devin this morning. I love these girls right here. I love my boys. I'm just using the girls because they're right here. I love these girls right here. Do you know that if they were in trouble right now, I mean this, I would die with a smile on my face if I knew it gave them life. You could look at me and tell me you're going to cut off my fingers and toes and I would say I'll start for you. Because I love them. I love them. And death does.
does not make me turn from them. Pain does not make me break relationship with them. Suffering is my joy if it means they don't suffer. That's a mother's love. And God's love is so much greater. It's why he didn't even spare his only son. Do you know I love you, but I don't think I would ever let Judah die for you? That may hurt your feelings, but I'm just being real. I love you, but I don't know if I could do that. But God did. He loved you with everything. He didn't even spare his own son for his bride. And he gave you everything you need to be victorious and prosper. And now trouble's upon us. He told us it would come. He told us that trouble would come in the last days, that there would be wars and rumors of wars and there would be earthquakes in various places, that there would be pestilence and and seismic things that would happen to the cosmos. He told us, and then he said, just don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let your heart be troubled. I've already overcome the world. Just stay close to me. I need to talk to somebody who don't feel like a warrior this morning. This season has been hard for you. And you're like, I don't feel like a warrior. I can't make another declaration. I can't fast another meal. I can't swing another sword. I'm tired, Pastor Devin. All hell is broken loose against me. I'm here to tell you, you don't have to be Peter right now. Just be John. All you have to do is crawl up in his lap, lay your head on his chest and say, Jesus, I'm not sure I can fight what's going on around me, but I'm just gonna stay close to you because I'm your bride, which means you are my protector. Protector. The battle isn't mine. The battle is yours. But for some of you, the Bible says in the last days, are you ready? The love of many would grow cold. It means that fire would go out. And I know under the sound of my voice in this room and on the airways, there's some flames that are flickering. Trouble showed up and you really thought, I don't know if this is worth it. I don't know if I believe all this. I don't know if it's worth all that. And we wonder why we are not seeing the book of Acts church in 2020. They were crucified upside down because they said they were not worthy to die as Jesus did. John was boiled in oil and he was still in church on the Lord's day. What is wrong with us? We have bought a lie. And Jesus is looking for his bride, not a Friday night date not a temporary thrill. I would die for Kevin. I would take Kevin's lungs right now and give him mine. That's a bride. We are supposed to be counting our suffering as all joy. Jesus, for the joy set before him endured the cross. What do you think he was looking at? What do you think the joy was set before him? It was you. It was me. It was his beloved. And some of us need to get our eyes off our trouble and put our eyes on our groom and say, Father, I wasn't made to live in this earth like this all my life anyways. There is a life set for me ahead of me. This life may be full of trouble, but I will be full of joy because you will never leave me and you will never forsake me. And for the joy set before us, can we not count it all joy in this season? I'm not even gonna get to get to the oil, that's fine. Because I feel like I just gotta stop right here. Let me tell you something, church. 
I'm not here to negatively prophesy, I'm here to mother. It ain't gonna get much better out there. If you're waiting for the world to get more pleasant, you are not reading the same Bible I'm reading. And I don't say that to produce fear. I say it to expose it. Because if that produces fear, then you need to be in the altar for a greater flame today. Because a book of Acts church, guess what? The harder the persecution got, the more they multiplied. The more they grew. When I read the book of Acts, there are stories of persecution not recorded in the pages of this book that you can read in history, and they're horrible. You would not believe the beatings they took. You would not believe the rejection they felt. But that's not what the book of Acts is filled with. It is filled with miracle after miracle, glory after glory, vision after vision. I'm telling you, they'd be in prison, and an angel would show up and break them right out and take them right out. It was the glory of the Lord. Because as the darkness tries to get darker, that flame inside of you just burns brighter. And I'm here to give you a two-sided coin today. The world's gonna get darker because it's crying out for the revelation of the sons and daughters of God. The earth is shaking because it is crying out for King Jesus to come and establish his kingdom. And if you are waiting to get serious about your Christianity till churches open back up and COVID goes away, you may be waiting till Jesus comes. But I'm here to tell you, if we would grab hold of this revelation, listen to me today. We are about to see the greatest glory the church has ever seen. We are about to see the greatest move of God the church has ever seen. And we've been prophesying it for years. We just left out the persecution part. Some of you were shouting in 2019 when we started talking about the glory of the Lord being revealed and the church growing and revival coming. But you just weren't ready for the trouble that would come attached to it. And we're not sugarcoating it today because a bride loves even when there's trouble. I put that ring on Kevin's finger and I said, for better or for worse, in sickness and in health, till death do us part. That's an earthly vow I took in an inferior relationship called love. Why would we give Jesus any different? Stand with me all over this place. God help me, this was so nowhere anywhere I intended to go. But Jesus is here and he is searching for his bride. And I declare that there is a shaking coming to the body and the bride will arise. There is a shaking coming to the body that will simplify what religion has made complicated. And there's a sifting coming to your heart. And you may feel like you've lost, but it's not gonna compare to what you're gonna gain. And I've got good news to the weary in this place. You don't have to be the greatest spiritual warrior to thrive in this hour you just got to be a keeper of the flame you may be sick in your body or tormented in your mind you may be fearful for your job or your future but if you will just keep your eyes on him even when Stephen was being stoned there was a fire on his face he glowed And I'm here to tell you, oh weary one, even in your trouble, if you will just nurture that flame called love, it's stronger than trouble. It's stronger than death. It's stronger than persecution. And you will find joy. Just heads bowed, eyes closed. Let the Holy Spirit search your heart. (laughs) 
I hope Kevin doesn't mind me telling this. But I sat with him and his tears were flowing. When he received the report for his lungs, and he said to me, what are we going to do, Devin? What are we going to do if I'm like this for months? I said, we're going to have the best few months we've ever had. We're going to go get pumpkins and decorate our front porch. And I'm going to let you sit here and plot how many Christmas trees you want to put up. And don't you quit on me now. We will make the devil pay. And we will have the best four months. Why am I saying that? Because trouble can only do to you what you let it do to you. You got to change how you look at it. And I'm here to tell you, I don't know when our nation will quote unquote return to normal. I'm not sure if it ever will, but I'm here to tell you this. If you love him and he loves you, you look at him and you say, Jesus, I will make this the best season for your bride that the church has ever seen. I will pray more. I will worship louder. I will tell every person I know that you're real and that you're coming back. We got to change how we're looking at our trouble. Raise your hands. He's here. He's here. He's here. Tasakandara Messiah. I see flames all over this place. Kantalamanda Maso. Shaitanabaya. He is here. And his flame of love is here. And it's available. And right now, with your hand lifted, if you need that flame to be relit in you right now, maybe the devil's been after your fire. I want you to forget all the trouble and focus on your flame right now. And raise your hands and just ask him, relight me, Father. Father, I pray right now for every hungry heart and hand lifted. Your bride needs a second wind right now. A second wind. If it took a first wind to birth the church, it's going to take a second wind. Right now, I decree a second wind over your body. I decree a second wind on this house. I decree a second wind all the way to Athens. I decree a second wind to Bulgaria. I decree decree a second wind all the way to Uruguay. Right now, let the wind of the Holy Spirit blow and put a flame on every head. Give us a bridal flame. Tada Messiah, just ask him, give us a bridal flame. A fire that's bigger than my trouble. A fire that's stronger than death. A passion that is like fire shut up in my bones. Take the muzzle off our mouths. Take the blinders off our eyes. We're in this, Jesus. We're in it to the end. This bride, this RTTN bride, we recommit our hearts to you right now. We declare we will be a bride whose eyes are turned toward you. So right now, wash us with your word. Keep those hands lifted. Wash it out of me. Wash the coward right out of me, Jesus, and replace it with a flame of love. Wash the fear right out of me, Jesus, and replace it with a flame of love. Wash the worry right out of me. Get it off my garment. Get that spot off my garment and replace it with the flame of love. Right now, you pray it. Whatever you need, whatever you need the word to wash out of your heart right now that's in competition with your flame, just give it to him. Somebody needs the Holy Ghost to wash grief off. Grief has been competing with your flame. Somebody, I just declare you're being freed of depression right now. The Word is just washing that right off your garment. Spirit of oppression, get off your bride in Jesus' name. And with those hands lifted, why don't you just recommit love to Him? Jesus, we don't want to just be a brother or a sister or a friend. We want to be your bride. We want to be your bride. 
let a flame burn in us, let a flame burn in us that cannot be quenched by the division in this world. It cannot be quenched by sickness. It cannot be quenched by economic stress. It cannot be quenched by crazy politicians. It cannot be quenched by weather conditions and storms. It will not be quenched for it's not of this world. It's not of this world. Do you hear me? This fire is not of this world. Therefore, nothing in this world can put it out. Give us a heavenly flame. So right now with hands lifted, Holy Ghost, just fall on your people. Second wind, second wind, second wind. Fall on your people. I'm just gonna prophesy it again. I wasn't going to, but I said it at Women of Fire. Some of you have got the wind knocked out of you. The devil took a sheep, cheap shot and you have been paralyzed and lying on the ground half dead. You got the wind knocked out of you, but I prophesy with this flame comes a wind. It comes a wind, a second wind, right at the point of your weariness. The Holy Ghost is about to kick in. You're not going to crawl to the finish line for the end of 2020. I declare a second wind is coming to the church. Receive it right now. Receive it. If you're weak and you're weary, this is for you. Just raise your hands and say, Father, give me a second wind. Yeah, yeah. life over you. I speak strength over you. I'm blowing on your flame right now. Hey! Yeah, my kotada, my soya. Receive, receive. Right now the Holy Spirit is setting souls on fire. If you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, don't think about it anymore. Just open your mouth and start speaking in your heavenly language. Kotala makaya. Yeah, 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 Kora, ma, 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 yeah, yeah, ta, da, da, ma, yeah, yeah, ma, 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 sa, yeah. If you're already filled, let it begin to prophesy strength to you. K, ta, da, ma, yeah. The Comforter is here. The Comforter is here. Hey, hey. Yo, ma, kanda, ma, so, ta, yeah. You can stay at your seat and get set on fire. You can come to these altars and down the highways and get set on fire. There's plenty of room to social distance. Just get yourself in a place where you and the Holy Ghost can start all over again. Return, return to your first love, says the Lord. Return, return, oh bride, to your first love. Come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit, saturate your bride. We're desperate, desperate for you. Just press in, don't wait on a person. His glory is here. His Spirit is here. Just receive, receive the Holy Ghost. Receive. Oh, breath of God, oh, breath of God. Blow on the flame, Father. Blow on the flame. Oh, breath of God, oh, breath of God. Let the Ruach of God blow in this place. Let the Ruach of God blow on the bride. Oh, breath of God, oh, breath of God. La mandara masoya. Tandara makara mahosoya. Come Holy Spirit, oh breath of God, oh breath of God. <laughs> oh fire of God, oh fire of God. Come fire, come fire, come 
let the spirit and the bride cry. Go ahead, let the spirit and the bride cry out. Let hunger cry. Oh. Let's do it this way. Keep crying out. When you're finished, you may leave. I pray the word encouraged you. I want to pray for a couple people before we go, and I realize that's not for everyone. If you've not been filled with the Holy Spirit yet, and you would like to be, would you just wave your hands to me from your seat? It's okay. Anybody in here? That's right. Wave them high. Anybody? 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 I see some hands. So if you're near someone like you came with them or you can stretch your hands toward them, and I'm gonna even say this, if you wanna come forward, you are absolutely welcome. I wanna pray for people to be filled with the Holy Ghost. So if that's you, you're welcome to come forward or just stretch both hands really high so we can see, not so people can look at you so they can pray for you. And then I'm gonna ask some people that are near them, like you came with them or you're sitting with them, the person you came with, lay your hands on them. Or if they come forward, we've got some altar workers. Remember our policy is if you're willing, we're willing. So no pressure, you can wear your mask, but if you're willing, we're willing. And then I want some intercessors to pray. In the name of Jesus, Father, you see every hand that was lifted and you are still pouring out your spirit on all flesh. And I declare on this Sunday morning, the flame of the Holy Spirit is falling on your bride. Thank you, Father. We don't have to wait for it and we don't have to work for it. It's just a gift we receive. And so I pray right now, you would fill every hungry heart with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Let this be the day, Father. They are filled with the Holy Ghost. So would you just help me pray right now? Every person who is asking to receive the Holy Spirit, I pray, Holy Ghost, you would come upon them. And as you pray, I just want you to focus on Jesus if you're praying. And His Spirit's going to come on you. You'll know it. You'll know it when you know it. He's undeniable. Some people shake. Some people feel heat. Some people just cry. You'll know. And when His Spirit comes upon you, He's going to give you an utterance. It's not going to come from your brain. You're not going to have to sit there and think of a language. It's just going to be within your hearing. And it actually comes from your spirit you just haven't done that yet it's going to be within your hearing and I just challenge you to open your mouth and yield even if it's just one syllable he's just he's a gentleman he's not going to flap your tongue for you he's going to whisper it to you and you're just going to yield and begin to pray and it will be like Niagara Falls once you open that gate the Holy Spirit will just start flowing out of your mouth that's all you got to do no fear no labor no work just raise your hands and receive in the name of Jesus receive the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus receive the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus receive the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus receive 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 in the name of Jesus receive the Holy Ghost all over this place receive 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 out of your belly now rivers of living water begin to flow out of your belly let rivers of living water begin to flow in Jesus name in Jesus name so while they pray to receive the Holy Spirit take this word let it bear fruit in your heart but I really do feel like there are some people in here you are just desperate you are weary you are broken and you need a second wind. Your flame is struggling to survive and you are desperate for a breakthrough. I'm not letting you walk out that door that way, not in a house of victory. And so if that's you, if you say, Pastor Devin, I've got to have a breakthrough. I need the Holy Spirit to breathe on me. Would you just wave your hand at me right now? Okay, so all of you, Again, you can stay at your seat, but I promise you there's space up here. If you want to come to social distance, you can step out in your eyeways. 
it's just sometimes important to change your position. At least raise your hands. At least raise your hands. Get yourself out of a stuck position and say, Father, I'm coming after you and I have faith. You're, you're about to transform me in your presence. And the way I walked in these doors, I'm leaving different. That's the faith I have for you right now. In one moment, in the fire of his presence, a quickening, a quickening, a quickening is coming to your spirit. And that spirit that's been vexing you is leaving and the Holy Ghost is about to invade, invade every place. So right now, those of you that are willing, just stretch your hands forward. Those altar workers that we have that are willing, you can put a mask on and pray. But this is a desperate time. I just need to stop right there. I'm willing. And I pray right now. I will not, Father, sit by while my brothers and sisters lose the breath and the, their body and the fire and their spirit. I stand in the gap in intercession right now for my brothers and my sisters who are weary. They face much trouble. Just like Paul, God, if you don't break in, they don't know what they're going to do. I'm not going to watch them walk out of here broken, Father. I'm coming before heaven right now on my knees saying, Father, strengthen your people right now. Holy Ghost, break in, break in, break in, break in, break in, break in. Messiah, supernatural breakthrough. Fire burn in them. Blow on the flame, oh God. Blow on their flame, oh God. Let the fire burn. Let strength come. Let joy come. Now, would you stretch your hands toward them and pray like I'm praying for your brothers and your sisters for encouragement and strength and breakthrough, 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 breakthrough. Lama Shandara Makasaya. It breaks, it breaks, it breaks, it breaks. Kotara Maya. That yoke breaks. That yoke breaks. The anointing breaks. That yoke. Yay. Kotara Maya. It breaks, it breaks, it breaks, it breaks. Let the wind, let the wind blow. Let the wind of your spirit blow. Bring strength, bring strength. We pray for the body. Your Messiah, just keep praying for him. 